Good morning and welcome to Slow Roll. We're gonna start upright and then find our way down onto our backs on our mats. Um, blanket is optional and just always listening to the body, doing what you feel is necessary to take care of yourself based on how you're arriving on the mat today. So with that being said, the invitation is for you to find your way to some form of sitting that feels good for your body right now. And as you're settling into that, just offering a few mindful breaths to the current state of your being. And perhaps doing a little bit of a scan from head to toe and from the ground back up again to just check in with yourself physically, energetically, mentally. Just taking in all of those layers, noticing whatever it is that's present for you without judgment or criticism. And starting to invite this connection to ground into your practice. Feel the earth underneath you. And maybe just take a moment to landmark where you are. So in my case, I'm located on the physical earth in the village of Richmond on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. I'm grateful for this morning, for this breath, and the opportunity to connect and share practice with you today. So perhaps if you know the land, the territory that you may be resting on, whether you're on the physical ground or you're on the second or third floor of a home, there's this recognition of earth beneath us. Maybe you can name that space, really orient to where you are, where you're coming from today. And by way of honoring the ground that you're residing on and also feeling the physical earth underneath you, we start to drop anchor. We start to drop roots and become heavier. Feeling into the various connection points that we have. and then allowing for a rising up and space to also be a part of this process. Maybe it feels good to stretch a bit taller through the crown of your head. Maybe it feels more comforting to just stay a little more tucked in. So what is it that you need? What is it that you're recognizing in these moments? And how can you show up for yourself with the utmost care? And perhaps it would feel good to allow the hands to come and rest somewhere on your body in this moment, or maybe it's an Anjali Mudra that feels more genuine to you right now. an opportunity to offer a little bit of sound to open practice. So the vibration of OM three times. You may choose to raise your voice or perhaps not. Either way, we'll take an inhale deep together and let it go with a sigh. 
finding sound. Oh. for those hands to come away from your body just let them drop down either off to the side of you or maybe it feels better to lean forward and touch ground by just leaning in a little bit so whatever feels best and much as we envisioned roots and the foundation in our posture we can also create roots through our hands so just attuning to the vibration of your breath, the sensation of earth below you. And this type of grounding work that we're going to be doing today is extremely important, especially when we're coming into a full moon phase as we are this weekend the high energy of the sun right now plus the full moon pulls us up and out so we have to remember to ground back down and in to stay stable can you imagine yourself cycling through this pendulum between renewal and release can you draw up from the earth and then give back as you breathe in the renewal, as you breathe out the release. And then slowly letting those hands come away from the earth, however you would set yourself up. And you'll just take a moment to orient yourself to your space before we find our backs on the mat. So allowing for your eyes to open and if you have a screen in front of you, you're just gazing above it. And we'll slowly start to turn our heads off towards the left. So you're just tracking through your space, slow and steady. Gaze can sweep up and down. You're just noticing what's around you whether you're indoors or outdoors, tracking for beauty, tracking for safety. And as you come to look over that left shoulder, more firmly anchor yourself into your right sit bone. And then you'll gradually track back around towards center. Maybe your gaze picks up on something new. Maybe it's something familiar and you're taking it in with fresh eyes. Skipping the screen and gradually starting to orient yourself off to the right. Again, sweeping. Noticing without any kind of storyline. And when you get to that place of anchoring over your right shoulder, send that left sit bone deeper into the earth to hold you steady. And then we allow for that gaze to then sweep back towards the center. Little by little. And when you feel yourself facing forward, Allow the eyes to close if it feels okay to do so, or maybe just turn your gaze down a tiny bit. Allow for that orienting practice to land in your body.
And now that we've kind of surveilled our spaces for safety and comfort, we can find our way down onto our backs on the mat. And just taking your time as you get there. Excuse me, Manu. <laughs> I'm fighting for mat space this morning again. Oh. So once you're down on your back, if you know there's tenderness, especially into that low back and hip area, bring your feet to the earth, knees up towards the sky. And maybe a little bit of movement here would feel best. Some gentle windshield wipers or something along those lines if you happen to have the feet to the ground. And if you've chosen to stretch the legs out long, you could just wave your feet. You'll still get that movement through the bones in your legs. And then we'll come to find stillness, allow the body to settle back into a place of non-doing. Another opportunity to feel into all of those connection points that you have with the ground in this moment. Maybe you imagine tender roots springing forth from those contact points, offering you more opportunities to ground, to connect. And then we'll come to do a little rolling of the head off to one shoulder, slowly back to center and then over the other way. And you'll just go back and forth in this manner a few times. And you'll allow for the head to come and rest gently on the ground again. Allow your arms to open away from the body if they happen to have been quite close. Start with the palms up towards the sky. And then with breath as you exhale, slowly turn the palms down. Inhale, gradually roll back open to that gesture of receiving. Exhale, roll the palms down. Inhale, open them to sky. We'll just do that a couple more times. And then you'll allow for the arms to find stillness. You'll take your attention down to your hips, your glutes, your buttocks. And from here, we'll slowly engage those muscles, squeeze, feel the body lift, whether you're stretched long in Shavasana or in that supported form with feet to the ground, you can still work the glutes. And we're just going to squeeze and lower a few times, squeeze and release. And allow for your body to drop back into stillness after your, little, your last tense and release moment. And if your knees were bent, you may try stretching the legs long and vice versa. We're going to come back to that waving motion with the legs. So opening the feet, closing the feet, so just turning them back and forth if the legs are long or you're back to a bit of a windshield wiper type motion if you've now bent the knees.
And once again, you enter into a doorway of stillness and just pause there to observe for a few moments. And little by little, you'll draw knees in towards your chest and maybe you start to do a bit of rocking side to side. Maybe you would prefer to stay with windshield wipers instead, just listening to that precious body of yours. What feels good right now? and deciding whether you want to roll off to a side and bring yourself around to tabletop or if you want to rock and roll and kind of flip yourself over we're bringing ourselves around to that all fours and really attuning to what it is your hands need right now open palm knuckle or fist and we'll just entertain a bit of free movement here so maybe it feels good to waggle your hips one side to the other maybe it feels better to do some rounding motions what is it that you're being guided to do here So there's the opportunity to stay super slow and soft in your movements here. And there's also the opportunity to dial it up a notch if you wanna add some energy to your practice. So feel free to try many options on for size. We'll kind of make our way back to the center and begin to explore our relationship with cow and cat today. Inhaling, letting the belly drop, crown and tail start to float up. And then exhaling, slowly rounding that spine, hug the belly button in. And it might be that you want to slow this down tremendously and maybe exist in cow and cat for longer than you normally would. Maybe your body wants to go with a more breath related pace. And from this little exploration of cow and cat, do you want to stay here? Do you maybe want to weave in a child's pose, let the body take a little bit of a break where you flow from being in that quadruped, all fours and high to a nice little low position in a child's pose or some other form. And there's the option to elevate this by maybe coming to hover the knees. So as you inhale, there could be a cow pose. And as you exhale into cat, you could engage and maybe push off the ground a little bit and then come back through. It all depends on your current reality. And if you happen to be playing with that little bit of engagement and lift, you could try doing it pushing the tops of the feet into the ground or tucking the toes and using them as your little push off point. And 
maybe another cycle or two of that cow and cat or however you're entertaining these movements right now. And then come to rest, maybe in a child's pose. Maybe you wanna just flatten yourself right to the ground in a prone resting form. What does your body require right now? Settle into that. Witness your grounding points here. Feel the sinking and that pushback from the earth, that lightness and springing. You may choose to stay in your resting form a little while longer. Maybe you're getting antsy and you wish to move. Eventually, we're going to come back to this tabletop like position. And explore letting your hips drift off to the left side. So they're just going directly off to the left. You might feel a little bit of a tension or a pull through that hip through your glute. Just seeing how this works out for you. There is the option, I've started playing with this in my own practice, to bend into that right elbow, lower the right side of the body and really start to lean out to the left. I find I get a little bit of release in my shoulders and a super deep release in the hips. So that might be something worthy of exploring for you as well. And then we'll come out of that pivot through center pause to take that in. And then we'll slide the hips off to that right side, pausing there with the option to maybe bend into that left elbow, sink into the forearm, getting a little bit into the shoulders, a lot more into that right hip. And we'll make our way back to center. Let's come to high kneeling. So walk the hands back towards those knees. Wiggle out through the fingers. Roll through the wrists. So depending on your shoulders, you may choose to take the arms up overhead or you might just choose to keep maybe a hand into the low back or just arms down to the side. We're going to do a little bit of lateral reaching here. If you're bringing the arms overhead, we're interlacing the fingers, turning the palms up towards the sky and just stretching out here. So if the arms are to the side, you can still stretch and wiggle tall without taxing your shoulders. And slow and steady with an exhale, we're going to reach out to the left side. Offering much breath and patience to that right side as we stretch into it. Exhale, bring yourself back to center. So we use that core integration here. Let's release the arms down in front of us. If you were doing that bracing and just shake it out for a moment. And then we're going to come around the other way. So if you're doing the overhead, interlace your fingers in the opposite direction. So it'll probably feel a little bit yucky. <laughs> and we're just going to mitigate that and exhale slowly, reach off to the right. So much breath fanning its way through that left side of the rib cage now.
and using the contraction of an exhale to bring yourself back up and slowly release again shake things out all righty so we're going to take the left leg off to the side and root down into the sole of the left foot if possible otherwise you could be pushing into the instep and anchoring that way finding that sense of ground and stability here various rooting points and if it's all right to mobilize those arms we're slowly sweeping that right arm up reaching towards the sky and it's like you're trying to pick an apple that's just on a limb a little too high for you but you're stretching 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 on your tippy toes and reaching with that arm breathe into this and you may choose to stay here with that left hand just anchoring to the thigh you may choose to start to reach off to that left side taking on a bit more of an extended gate pose here and if that arm reaching starts to feel a little too much just drop it to your side body or loop it into your low back you're still going to get that nice opening in the ribs, breathing into this. And we'll exhale, slowly come up here. We're going to come into half moon balance from the kneeling position. So this is optional. Taking that right hand down to the ground a little bit behind your right knee and see about maybe floating that left leg up maybe the left arm reaches here flexing into your left foot if you've taken it away from the ground breathing here and then we'll let that go bend into the left knee come to high kneeling again or maybe it would feel better to sit back on your heels or stretch out on the mat for a few moments a longer pause for deeper integration although we're not really moving a great deal there is still some internal heat that's being generated And if you happen to have sat back down or you were leveled out in some other way, we'll come back to that high kneeling and we're gonna create our little gate pose off to the right side now, stretching out that right leg, anchoring in tall in your spine, feel those roots getting stronger. right hand just reaching or resting on the thigh and we'll take that left arm and maybe sweep it up and again it's this lengthening taking up space like you're trying to reach for that apple in the tree that's just a little too high for you right now but you're bound and determined And then we ease out of that reaching and explore the possibility of coming off to the right side, maybe sliding further into your gate pose. And just reminding yourself of that option to change the position for that left arm if the shoulders are feeling a little too tweaky. And we'll exhale, come up slow and steady, release that left arm down to the side. And if you entertained that half moon balance the first time through, we'll slowly drop that left hand to the ground. And maybe this is your half moon, it's just keeping that right foot anchored. But if you want to add to that and float the leg and maybe reach that right arm, let that be where your practice carries you. Remembering to breathe, full body involvement here.
and gradually we release and we'll set back into either high kneeling or sitting back on our heels. We'll do one more move from the all fours before we return to our backs on the mat. So coming back around to tabletop if your body is willing. And from here, we'll walk the hands off to the left side. Slow and steady. And maybe this feels like more than enough for you here, just reaching around so you stay as you are. The other option is to start to sink into the right hip, pushing it towards the ground. So we feel this deep releasing coming through the hips, into the ribs, through the arm. And we'll come out of that and slowly walk ourselves back towards center. Take a moment in that pause point. And then we'll slowly walk ourselves over towards the right side. Same idea, sinking in. Maybe you push the hips out to the left to get further into the ribs and the hips. And we'll slowly come out. Bring yourself over onto your back on the mat. And we'll lower down so that feet are on the ground, knees are up to the sky, and we're back in this supported resting form for a moment. And we'll come to entertain a flowing bridge today. So it might be that it is the subtlest, tiniest movements that you work with, or maybe you choose to do a full hip lift, but we're connecting to the sense of breath and movement and strength within the pelvis, within the core. Your arms could be down to your side, palms touching ground, or they could be out to your side and maybe the palms up towards the sky. As you exhale, just feel the ground underneath your feet. Maybe you slowly lift up the tailbone and negate the curve in your low back and that's where you stop. And then you just inhale, let the body reset, come back to its neutral. And this might be where you choose to stay for the little bridge flow. You may choose over time to explore maybe lifting a few vertebrae and letting them come down. Or maybe you lift even higher if you're in that want for a little more energy and strength this morning. But no matter how subtly or expressively you're exploring this flowing bridge, those core muscles are still being woken up. No matter which degree you're playing with right now. And there is the option to add some arms to this at some point. 
if you'd like. And adding the arms might be coming back to that rolling open with the palms as you lift and rolling down with the palms, the arms staying to the ground as you lower, or maybe the arms start to reach up towards the sky or all the way overhead and come down. There's so many varying ways to which you could add some arm movement to your flowing bridge. So what works for you? And when you feel your body's had enough of this bridge exploration, let's come back to a resting point. You might feel like you want to release those legs and take on a temporary Shavasana. You may feel you want to just keep the feet to the ground, maybe let the knees fall in towards one another. And let's mobilize the head and the neck again here, gently rolling from one shoulder through center and then over to the other. You'll come to pause the head back to a more centered place. Let's reach the hands towards the feet, the heels, like somebody's dragging on your wrists. Feel that little bit of energy. And then you'll shrug those shoulders tight up towards the ears. Tension from a different vantage point and then completely surrender. Let those arms settle where they're happy. Pick up one leg. Imagine somebody's tugging on your ankle. Kind of pull it out of the socket and then squeeze into the glute. Feel the leg retract, come back in and let that go. Same thing on the other side, the sensation of someone pulling on your heel and your ankle, and then really contracting into that glute, feel the leg pull back in towards the socket and let it go. We're going to take our tree pose, which is traditionally a standing balance posture, and we're just going to lay it flat on the ground. So keeping your right leg long, you'll slowly bend into your left knee. So it's pointing up towards the sky. The foot is near your right knee. And whenever you're ready, start to exhale and slowly drop that left knee open to the side and you'll flex into that right foot as though you were standing so we're engaging the trunk of the tree stabilizing it and then you choose what to do with your arms maybe they come out to the side in a t maybe they open more like goal posts or cactus arms where you reach overhead with fingers interlaced. So many options. What would your tree look like if you were standing? And how can you transpose that to this 
lying down supine position. And then breathe into this. Keep that right leg engaged, the foot flexed. And you'll then come to soften out of that. Relax your right leg. Maybe you adjust the position of your arms. And then we'll gradually shift, bend into your right knee, scoop up your left leg, pause in that neutral spine. Maybe your arms return closer to the body for a moment. And we then set up our supine tree pose the other way around so we're straightening out that left leg the bend stays in the right knee and whenever you're ready letting that right knee start to fall open to the side now engaging in your left leg flexing into the foot so again what would your tree pose look like if you were standing And come to reposition the arms. Maybe you try something a little bit different on this side. Keep flexing into that left foot. Keep the base of your tree solid. Beautiful deep breaths here. And then you'll come to let everything go. And slowly releasing. Taking a couple of minutes to just do some intuitive little movements. Maybe you start to gather up some props to support you as you eventually come to Shavasana. But there's no rush in any of this. You're just taking your time, finding your way through. Those intuitive little movements like a soft landing spot for you mentally, physically, energetically. What can you give the gift of your attention to for the next few minutes? Ensuring that you're tending to some of the more primal needs of safety, comfort, And eventually you will settle into some kind of resting pose that feels best for you. And trusting that as you settle, as my voice gets quiet, that I will still be here with you. And you're just allowing yourself that beautiful expanse of time and space to truly settle into ground. Feeling yourself being held 
oh so lovingly by Mother Earth. And that gentle cycle of renewal and release with your breath as the anchor here. Just this.
May the strength of the wind and the light of the sun, the softness of the rain and the mystery of the moon reach you and fill you. May beauty delight you and happiness uplift you. May wonder fulfill you and love surround you. May your step be steady and arm be strong. May your heart be peaceful and your word be true. May you seek to learn. May you learn to live. And may you live to love. And may you love always. I'm receiving that little blessing and the sounds of the chimes just intuitively starting to wiggle and roll and stretch and do whatever you need to as you bring your practice to a close today. Not rushing any part of that process. So if you feel you need to stay grounded a little bit longer in your resting place, then so be it. Just honoring whatever needs to unfold for you as we bring our time together to a close. And if you happen to venture to bring yourself back to a place of sitting, whenever you get there, allow the hands to come to a place of comfort. taking a few moments to offer some gratitude towards yourself for the courage and the willingness to find your way to the mat to practice today. As we give thanks to all of the puzzle pieces of life that fell into place to allow us to connect and share. A single om to close practice, a clearing breath in and letting it go to sound. Thank you for your practice. Namaste.